Hello, welcome back to the third part of the Very Curious Herbal. I'm Amanda Edmiston and I'm a professional storyteller up in Scotland with a background in herbal medicine. Hopefully you've caught one of my earlier parts to the Very Curious Herbal project and if you have you'll know that I'm working on stories and uses of plants um, inspired by the work of Elizabeth Blackwell, an incredible woman who published the very first herbal in 1737. The very first herbal published by a woman, that is. Um, I'm inviting you now to come out of the tea rooms because in the last session we enjoyed delicious afternoon tea uh, through stories. Um, I have my cup with me and I'm going to take my cup virtually, if you like, into the garden because the final session that I'm sharing with you is inspired by some of the plants that Chawton House have in their fantastic dedicated Elizabeth Blackwell herb garden. I've brought my cup because one of the plants I'm going to look at is... Um, Fabulous for a cup of tea. It's a plant that I think really kind of encompasses the duality of the time that Elizabeth Blackwell was working in. It's a plant that is associated in many ways with um, sort of uh, folk healing remedies, but was of course uh, still part of the more established um, uh, Materia Medica um, available to apothecaries and physicians in the 18th century. Um, this is yarrow and I'd like to share with you one of the rhymes and there are many um, associated with this, this rather fabulous plant. Uh, Achillea is its Latin name. I have a, a small dried uh, sample in my herbarium here and these are these are a few years old now um, but I I have I've dried them and, and seeing as I can't get out to the Elizabeth Blackwell garden today I thought I'd bring my dried herbaria with me um, this is yarrow and you can probably recognize it from the dried sample so I have yarrow tea and for those of you who aren't used to drinking herbal infusions. It's really simple. Um, yarrow grows beautifully in both gardens and in the wild. And all you do is, is pluck a flower and maybe a few leaves and you don't dry them out. <laughs> you pop them into a teapot or a cafetiere and pour just boiled water. Let it cool maybe for a few seconds onto the yarrow, about a flower and a couple of leaves to a cup of water. And then you have yourself a cup of yarrow tea. The rhyme goes, Yarrow way, yarrow way, bear the first blow. If my love loves me, then let my nose bleed. An interesting rhyme and it reveals a strange little bit of folklore. Yarrow, some of you may realise it's yarrow stalks that are used in the I Ching in, in China, but in Scotland there is a tradition that yarrow stalks were used in um, witchcraft and in divining. This is one of the, the reasons I love sharing Yarrow's story as part of the Curious Herbal because Elizabeth Blackwell publishes her Curious Herbal in 1737, two years after the Witchcraft Acts have been revoked. The law changes in 1735 to, be, to make the crime um, that people are guilty of impersonating a witch. Um, it's a while before people stop being accused of impersonating a witch and a, a little more on that in a minute. But um, suddenly the medical establishment would maybe prefer to look at the Greek and Roman legends that, about plants and follow maybe a more conventional path in looking at them. The 
rhyme I shared with you um, comes about because there is this very curious Scottish divining ritual which uh, Maud Greaves m mentions in her Modern Herbal in the early 20th century where girls were said to um, prod themselves in the nose with stalks of yarrow to find out, as the rhyme suggests, who loves them. Um, they were also said to be cast to show the future and uh, one of the, the last witch of Ayrshire Belle McGee, who lived until the mid 19th century, um, so was born long after Elizabeth Blackwell, um, was accused of uh, using yarrow as a yarrow stalks to divine things, but in her in her acts to help cure people and animals, she uh, wasn't she wasn't. Um, tried she was tried as a witch but she wasn't um she wasn't punished in any way we don't really know what happens to Belle McGee but it's interesting to reflect on the fact that Elizabeth is doing this huge body of work looking at plants in this incredible transitional time so Yarrow, of course, as many of you will be familiar or may have suddenly realised from its Latin name, is also associated with Achilles. The legend goes that um, Achilles' mother was, um, n was a, a goddess and although his father was mortal, she decided to take matters into her own hands and help bolster up her son's ability to withstand mortal enemies by bathing him in the river sticks and so she takes him and she grabs him by the ankles and plunges him into the turbulent waters. This succeeds in giving Achilles an extra layer of protection and being a sensible minded mother you'd imagine she would then turn him round and dunk his feet in to et add extra protection, make sure he was covered all over. But so the story goes, she's then sort of chanced upon by um, an enemy and the army is, is bearing down on them and so she doesn't manage to get her son's ankles plunged into the river. And that is why he has this point of vulnerability, his Achilles heel. Later on, he meets the healer and centaur, Chiron, and Chiron gives Achilles yarrow. Because yarrow is an incredible stauncher of blood. It may bring blood forth in one aspect when um, applied to the nose in an act of divination, but it will also help staunch blood. And that is what Chiron gives it to Achilles for to help protect him and his men on the battlefield. Um, so yarrow is this interesting plant. It's associated with both witches and warriors. And it happens in this time that, uh, that Elizabeth looks at it in this time between the end of the witch trials and the Jacobite rebellion as, medical, as the medical establishment is asserting itself. When, um, when a woman would usually be in the house looking after the children, doing a little needlework, playing a tune. And we have our strong woman who is going out, walking down towards Chelsea Physic Garden, probably with her young son and drawing plants and having her work validated by these incredible, powerful men Sir Hans Sloan, Isaac Rand, Philip Miller. Um, so as you can see now we're in the garden or at least imagining that we're in the garden surrounded by the beautiful scented aromatic yarrow on one hand and rosemary, that beautiful aroma that um, you know, Shakespeare says, Rosemary, that's for remembrance. Elizabeth Blackwell mentions that Rosemary is good for the memory. And um, 
lavender, that soother of souls, that bringer of sleep. Imagine running your hands through verdant borders and smelling those aromatic herbs. As I've mentioned, uh, the, there's this link to um, a much darker time where people are being castigated for their knowledge of plants or their way of healing. Um, midwives often get the finger pointed at them not not uh, all witches were which were midwives or herbal healers in fact they were probably in the minority and there were a, a number of men accused of witchcraft as well however the association with midwifery which has become popularized uh is also interesting because um i i did a workshop at one point with a, a lovely herbalist and author Elizabeth Brooke and um, she her one of her early books has just been re-released um, Women Healers in History but she talks about the possibility and we had a fascinating discussion about the possibility that Elizabeth Blackwell actually um, attended workshops in midwifery um, William Smiley one of the male midwives um, of the era who uh, rather um, strangely introduced the forceps. It, this is a, a very odd time where midwifery is also in transition being um, medicalized and taken away from the hands of the wise woman at the end of the village. But um, Elizabeth does share in her book mention of herbs like um, turmeric and fennel and talks about them in relation to their use in um, midwifery and just after childbirth. So she is someone who has more knowledge than we have historically credited her with. But as we walk through our virtual garden, I want to go back and, and focus on those plants of the head. As we left the tea rooms after the last session, you may have still had the taste of cucumber on your lips. And whilst you won't find an exotic cucumber here in the gardens at Chawton, you might be might enjoy bearing it in mind that um, Elizabeth mentions cucumber can cheer decaying spirits. She talks about mixing it, um, the leaves boiled in wine and, and mixed with honey as a cure for um, melancholia and uh, also the bite of a dog. Um, <laughs> but so whilst that you're still savouring those cucumber sandwiches and you have that scent of aromatic rosemary still on your hands, I brought my bit of rosemary here in from my own garden earlier. Um, it's worth mentioning how many of the remedies she suggests actually still have application today. Rosemary, as well as being mentioned by Shakespeare and by Elizabeth Blackwell, um, is still being researched. The rather wonderful Dilston, House, Dilston Physic Garden up in Northumbria in, uh, in conjunction with um, Newcastle University are researching the use of rosemary along with sage, another plant that Elizabeth Blackwell mentions is great for memories, and lemon balm, that soothing, sweet, calming herb um, as being effective in the treatment of, um, of people who are, might be prone to developing uh, dementia later on in life. Certainly herbalists are everywhere will assure you that a cup of rosemary tea made in the same way I made my yarrow tea um, a day is, is fabulous for the health. So we're walking down past the yarrow and the rosemary and we come to one of my favourite plants, bright yellow. And they'll just be starting in the sunshine in the more southern parts of, of Britain to be coming into flower. The rather wonderful St John's Wort, which also has the, um, the name Chase the Devil. Now, um, Elizabeth mentions that St John's Wort is um, 
let me, I'll read her exact words. A tincture of flowers in spirit of wine is commended against melancholia and madness. You may all be familiar now with the use of St John's wort as an antidepressant, something that in many countries in Europe is prescribed by um, doctors of, of allopathic medicine. Um, certainly it's widely used by herbalists and um, that's been hinted at in folklore for hundreds and hundreds of years. But said, now there's a, there's a story that I kind of wove together myself um, from pieces of folklore. It's something I do quite a lot called story mending and I do it um, across my practice but I've done a few particularly for the Curious Herbal because there are so many aspects of Elizabeth Blackwell's work that find their way into uh, legend if you just kind of like find the thread and the symbolism to connect them. Um, this is a, st a story that I, I wrote a number of years ago um, and it's very short but it, it's about one of the folk names for St John's Wood. Chase the Devil. Now it's said that there was a, a young man and he'd been lying in his mother's house and his usual happy demonair, his usual, his usual willfulness to work, he was usually a happy, joyous person. He loved to help anyone but then slowly, quite slowly, almost imperceptibly, he started to lose some of his joy and vigour. He stopped wanting to socialise and see his friends. He stopped wanting to work so hard and it reached the point where all he could do was lie in his bed and moan, turn away from his mother as, he, uh, as she asked him what ailed him. She tried everything she could think of. His brothers tried to make him laugh, but he just fell into a deeper and deeper gloom. Eventually, the mother went and sought the work of the wise woman. She called the woman down from the edges of the village where she lived and she came up with her basket of herbs. She took eyebright and rubbed it in to her forehead. And the eyebright helped open up her mind, helped her to see what everybody else had failed to see. Lying across a young man's form was a huge black dog, feasting on his happiness and his joy. What's more, the woman could sense the imminent arrival of the black dog's master, those clip-clopping obsidian hooves of the devil himself ready to snatch the boy away to oblivion. Quick as a flash, the wise woman took St John's wort from her basket and thrust it into the young man's mouth, just as Dog's master arrived. So incensed was Satan by this sight that he stabbed the plant's leaves with his pitchfork. And it's said that the plant oozed with the blood of St John the Baptist which healed the plant, but left it forever with tiny red blood-like perforations on its leaves. The young man, after being treated for a number of weeks with infusions of this magical herb, was soon restored to his former happy self. And from that day on, St John's wort was given the name Chase the Devil. As I say, that's a little bit of folklore woven into a story that relates to the uses that Elizabeth Blackwell talks about one of the plants in her book. There are many more stories like that in um, my project, The Very Curious Herbal, which you can catch up with online. Um, and I'd like to leave you as we prepare to leave this beautiful garden. And I've been really enjoying seeing pictures of it today, even though I haven't had the chance to visit this weekend in the real world and um, it's been gorgeous to see it virtually um, with a little thought on lavender. Our Elizabeth grew up in Aberdeen and Aberdeen eventually became home to its very own lavender factory 
Lavender was introduced to the UK, it's said by St Luke, um, many hundreds of years, and when he came with the Romans, many hundreds of years before Elizabeth's lifetime. But Lavender liked the northeast coast of Scotland so much. A funny thing of being a Mediterranean herb, what it appreciated most was the high amount of UV. Aberdeen gets lots of sunlight, it might be freezing, but it's really, really sunny. It gets a huge amount of UV, UV and the lavender thrived. And a whole perfume industry built up in Deeside for most of the 20th century, thanks to the perfume factory. Um, and so I imagine that our Elizabeth grew up with this herb so fashionable um, during the 18th century um, in her father, father's gardens in Aberdeen. A herb that will help you sleep and bring sweet dreams. When I last went down to Chelsea Physic Garden to deliver a, a session there, I took some time afterwards to go down to Chelsea Old Parish Church where Elizabeth Blackwell is buried. I was let in by a, a gentleman footering around in a potting shed because the church was shut and I told him what I wanted and he beckoned me in and I discovered that not only is she buried next to Sir Hans Sloan but she has lavender bushes in the garden alongside her grave and next to the memorial of her in the church is a golden statue of St Luke, the person who first brought lavender to her hometown of Aberdeen. I hope that um, lavender or the scent or the memory of the scent of lavender will help gift you sweet dreams and make you be able to imagine being spending time in a beautiful garden in the near future. Thank you all so very much for joining me and I hope you have a lovely time for the rest of the weekend. Thank you. Bye-bye.